Thanks to you. From God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. It was February of 1997. And I have to admit that life was pretty good. Um, I had just made the decision a few weeks before to uh, go to seminary, become a pastor, which took a lot off my mind and my heart of months of deciding about how God was calling me and that I felt some sort of call and, and what I should do. Uh, college was going great. I had wonderful friendships. I was in a wonderful relationship. And uh, things were just great. And then all of a sudden, it just all went to just like that. The girl broke up with me, my girlfriend broke up with me out of the blue, didn't see it coming at all. I started failing a class for the first time ever. Well, unless you count handwriting in third grade, <laughs> which I did fail. No, actually I didn't fail, I got a U, which meant unsatisfactory, a U. And what was really troubling about that was I was studying really, really hard. I had never studied harder for a class in my life. And no matter what I did, I kept failing it. I spent so much time studying for this class, I let my other classes slip, and all of a sudden I was doing bad in my other classes as well. I was in a really bad mood, and not because the Packers had won the Super Bowl uh, in that January, though that didn't help, mind you. But I was just, I was in a bad mood, so I started acting pretty immature, snapping to my friends, and so that started straining relationships with my, with my friends. And I felt incredibly alone. You know, I prayed and prayed and prayed. I said, God, you know, what the heck? I just made the decision to go and be a pastor, to spend the rest of my life serving you. I'm going to have to go to school for another five years. After this year, I'm doing all this stuff, and this is what you, this is all you repay me? My girlfriend breaks up with me, I'm, I'm having trouble in classes, my friendships, I, I feel hopeless. I feel alone. I love to say that that feeling went away like in a day or two or a week or two, but it didn't. It kept persisting. <coughs> and it got so bad that one Wednesday night, while the rest of the church that I went to was in Latin worship, I stayed in the student center. Because I thought to myself, what's the point? Life sucks. And God is ignoring me. Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt that sense of hopelessness and despair? I'm sad to say that I felt that many times actually in my life. But this time stood out because it was one of the only times I didn't revolve around the death of a loved one or someone close to me. You know, Hannah in our story is feeling that today. She's feeling full of hopelessness. She keeps asking God and praying for God the thing that she wants and needs and it's not happening. But then, notice her prayer. Hannah's prayer is a prayer for anyone that has ever felt hopeless. It is a prayer for the feeble, for the poor, for the lonely. It is a prayer that touches us. Because it is a prayer that says that God is there even when we don't see it. That God is a God of the lowly. A God, God is a God of the hopeless. That God is a God of the despairing. That God is a God that enters into the darkness of our lives and makes his presence known. After all, God took a symbol of death and torture, the cross, and turned it into a symbol of victory and triumph. God took a symbol of death and hopelessness to cross and turned it into a place of strength and new life. You know, the thing that I was missing in the midst of this dark period is I kept thinking that I was alone, but in actuality, God was there all the time. I just was so wrapped up in my own stuff, I couldn't see the ways that God was trying to reach me. Whether it was a a compliment or an encouragement from a friend, 
whether it was a good day or a good moment, whether it was moments of peace and rest that I found in the midst of all my anxiety, God was trying to reach me and show me that He was there. See, that's what sometimes happens when we get to these places of hopelessness. We miss the small ways that God enters into our life. We think God is going to come in a big neon sign saying, here I am, here I am. But in actuality, God comes to us as we are. Jesus comes to us and says, Come to me, all you that are weary and carry hurt, heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Jesus comes and says, I am the light of the world that will drag you out of darkness. Jesus comes and says, I am the rock, trust in me, and this will pass. And the thing is, it did pass. Eventually, I realized that God had been with me and that life was, was okay. I ended up passing that class. Barely. Thank, thank you. God must have came to the professor and changed the grading scale. That's all I'm going to say. Passed it barely. My relationships with my, with my friends actually strengthened. I found a new relationship uh, and a new girlfriend which brought me life. But most especially, I was renewed with a stronger sense of faith than I had before. Because God had seen me through the other side and had shown me that he had given his life for me and had not abandoned me. And that God was with me and hearing my prayers even when I thought he was absent. God is doing the same for you. If you feel lost, if you feel lonely, if you feel despair, if you feel hopeless, God is there in Jesus Christ, dying for you, loving you, hearing your prayers, finding ways to enter into your heart and show you even just a small way that you care for and love that he has brought people into your life as well to encourage you in the faith. Most of all, God and Jesus Christ has given you a promise that he is your God. He is the God of the lowly and the despairing, the hopeless and the hurting. And He is a God that brings healing, a God that brings life, a God that brings salvation. Trust in that promise. And you will come out the other side stronger. Because Christ is with you. For that we can say thanks be to God. Amen.